Seems like a little early in the build to be worrying about a fuel tank, but I need to know if this tank is serviceable, <clears throat> because if not, I might have to buy one. If I have to buy one, I may not be putting the stringers in the right place, because this is kind of an unusual size, or I'll have to get it custom made. Now, this tank was in there some kind of good. It was took a lot of work to get out. Um, I ended up prying it out with a big old steel pry bar. Um, and looking at it closely, um, there's some pads in the bottom of the boat where the tank was going to sit. And then they had some black rubber strips fixed to the tank. But apparently when they foamed it, the whole tank lifted up a little bit. Because the only thing touching, well, where the, where the wood pads are, there's about a half inch of foam. So I guess the tank lifted a little bit, which is good. The interesting thing is the majority of the pitting occurred under where the black straps were so I guess they were letting in a little oxygen um, where all this wet foam was stuck to the tank um, no problems that according to the plate holds 82 gallons and it was made on the eighth month of 1986 it's 0.125 thick at the eighth of an inch so that's fairly heavy and it is made of 5052 aluminum which I believe is the good stuff so it's not leaking because it was more than half full of fuel. Um, it's got a little bit of corrosion. See it look well. Most of it, it looks like brand new. There's a little bit of pitting. There's a little bit of pitting. And down on this end where I pried on it with the um, steel leaf spring so hard, it hardly has any damage. A little bit of dent, not much. I'm going to call in David Luke. He's the aluminum corrosion specialist and see what he thinks. But I think a little coat of epoxy paint, maybe a layer of uh, fiberglass cloth bedded in epoxy, this thing should be good for another 35 years. So I put some air in the tank. I got about four pounds. That's the recommended test pressure. And I went around and soaked the whole thing looking for bubbles where these little um, these little imperfections are. And I got no bubbles, so I got no leaks. I didn't think it leaked. Um, so this is good stuff. I'm going to finish cleaning it up. I, was used, uh, I used the back end of my micrometer for a depth gauge and I could get it pretty accurately. I never realized what that thing was for, but it makes a good depth gauge and I can read it in the thousands. So using the micrometer to check all these little pitted areas, um, the majority of them were in the teens, like 15 thousandths. There were one or two that were in the 20 thousandths, but none of them were deeper than that. So that means I still have over a hundred thousandths of an inch of aluminum left or a tenth of an inch which is pretty substantial so um, we decided that we we're going to keep the tank and just uh, protect it so it won't corrode anymore that's that's our goal right here is to protect it from further pitting I'm going to apply this as an etching compound and then I'm going to epoxy all the um, little corrosion spots with some JB Weld and then I'm going to cover the whole tank with um, six ounce cloth and more epoxy. Yesterday we treated the tank with the aluminum treatment stuff and rinsed it off and let it dry and I filled all of the little imperfections with um, epoxy and I've ordered some six ounce um, cloth and I'm going to cover the whole thing with cloth and epoxy but it, the cloth is not here yet okay I've given the tank a sanding and I have my new cloth and I have my new epoxy and I'm getting ready to give it a covering of 6 ounce uh, fabric 6 ounce fabric is really good strong stuff and it's easy to work with it's just, uh, it's kind of thin, so if you wanted to build up a bunch of layers, you'd have to use tons of it. But I just want one good layer on the bottom. I'm going to flip it over and put one layer on the top and um, fold that over. So wipe it down with acetone, and we're going to get ready to start. 
And the cat's going to have epoxy paws if she jumps on it in a little while. So I sanded all of the old paint coating off of the tank. And I sanded on the JB Weld. Man, that stuff's tough. So uh, I didn't worry about getting all the extra off. And so you can't see it, but there's a uh, hundred grit scratch marks all in the aluminum. So I'm pretty confident that uh, this glass will hold up. It, it's a, a static application once the tank is installed. It's not like it's going to be moving around. Um, nothing should be wearing on it. It's just to protect the the tank from oxygen. Um, and if it holds up good enough to get it in the boat and get it foamed in place, then that's it. There'll be no more worried about scratching it or any damage or anything like that. It should be in there like herpes forever. So either the camera quit, I didn't hit the start button. I can't tell right now. But I got it all on there. I worked myself crazy and I really didn't need to because this epoxy is set much lower than what the epoxy I've been working with. So I had plenty of time. I got a good layer of cloth everywhere the corners came out pretty well so I'll let this cure I'll sand it lightly and I'll probably put some tape I have some one inch uh, fiberglass tape on the corners and then flip it over we'll do the top um, and again the tank did not leak um, it did have some corrosion on the outside so I prepped the corrosion with some uh, thickened epoxy just a slow down any further corrosion and then I've covered the whole tank with epoxy and cloth just to give it an extra safety factor and I'm going to cover the top and then I'm going to paint the whole thing with epoxy paint so should be good for another 30 years that's my goal so the top of the tank is covered with cloth as are the top corners and now it needs a sanding and then we're going to put some epoxy paint on this to make it pretty This is Sherwin-Williams Duraplate. It's the final coating I'm going to put on the tank just to protect it from scratches and stuff. And it is 100% solid, so if I get 10 or 15 or 20 mils on it, that's what it's going to be when it dries. It's pretty, um, pretty rough stuff. Smells bad. Probably like a cross between cancer and brain damage. But it's 50-50, so I just leave these little cups in here all the time until they shrivel up and I get another one. Okay, so I want to turn the camera off, but I can't touch it because I got epoxy all over my gloves. This is it, pretty thick. Now we could use a little solvent. Let me go see what I got. Well, I really had planned on jumping in the boat and working on stringers, um, but this is good. I know uh, I know where we're going to go. This will be done when I'm ready for it. And it rained all week anyway, so this uh, little project worked out just right. Um, I'm happy with the fuel tank. Saved myself a bunch of money by not having to have a custom tank made. So life is good. Okay, bottom and sides coated. Tomorrow I can flip it over and coat the top and then get it out of here. It's uh, too big to be in my shop, but it's been raining every day for a week from the tropical stuff so I brought it in so I could work but uh, one more day and we'll be done with the fuel tank move on to another project so the tanks all finished up cleaned up sealed up painted and put back here to sleep until I'm ready for it which may be a little while 